Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Josh, and one of the most common questions I get on my videos, especially my longer trips where I use the machine, is what is that thing that's pulling you or you're riding on? And let's go over it and why I picked this. Let's go over seven reasons why I picked the snow dog instead of a snowmobile or an ATV. So I have lots of other videos about the snow dog, how I load it and stuff like that, and how you can use it. Um, but let's go over why I picked this instead of a snowmobile. First things first, it's super affordable. So I got this, they were discounting this model. So I got this for like $1,900. Now, like the cheapest snowmobile out there is like seven or $8,000 or something like that from, Art I'm an Articat guy, so I would buy Articat if I had the choice to. So that's like their cheapest one out there. Yes, I could go buy a older snowmobile and find some guy off Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace and deal with that and buy one of those and make sure it runs good and then get it registered. And then that's what I did the first time. And then the you know Magneto went out or something like that. And it just, snowmobiles weren't for me at the time. Um, and for, for the price, it was a really older machine. They stopped making some of the parts. So this is really affordable. That's what I'm trying to say. This is $1,900. The top model, I think for like the standard one of these, is like $3,500 or something like that. Um, and if you wanna to go to snowdog.com, you can do a dealer search. I am not sponsored by Snowdog at all. I just really love their product because I hate walking. So one, it's really affordable, which is one of the reasons I bought it. Uh, two, it is super lightweight. So this thing rocks in at 220 pounds. And the top model, the, the 13 BMR, um, the top like standard model, only weighs like 330 or 350. So I'm actually going to, I'll show you, I can lift that thing off the ground, no problem. I remember having my first snowmobile and it weighed, they call it a lead sled. It was just super heavy. Only weighs 220 pounds. I weigh 150. So I know lots of guys that weigh more than that machine. Now the advantage of that is one, I can throw it around. I, if it flips over, I can fix it and, and flip it back over myself. Two, would you look at the square footage? So that's a 20 inch track and that's probably two feet there. The footprint of this thing on the ice is actually less dangerous than me on the ice, just because the weight distribution is just so splayed out that I can go places where snowmobiles can't because and I can go on early ice with this thing. I can go on like four and a half to five inches with this. Yes, it gets a little nerve wracking. Um, I prefer more ice. Right now I'm standing on like nine or something inches of ice. I'm not even, not even concerned at all. So the lightweightness is awesome. Um, if you get it stuck, it's really easy to get unstuck. This doesn't have reverse, but the next model up does have reverse if you go into the 13 horsepower. So this is the seven horsepower. They've discontinued this model. They now sell a 10 for $3,000 and they sell a uh, 13 and a half horsepower for like that 38, $3,500, $3,800. Now I will show you how I transport it. So now that my truck is all packed, um, you can buy one of these like wheelchair, scooter accessible handicap ramps um, from Harbor Freight for, I'll put the number on the screen when I bought it for like 250 bucks or something like that. All the way up to like 600, $700 for like the aluminum ones um, that are like super heavy duty. This is aluminum with a steel shaft, uh, a steel subframe basically. And it fits in a two inch receiver. That means you can have an, an SUV or anything small and you can just put it right in the back and it sits on the back. You don't need to register a trailer. You don't need to worry about trailer maintenance, about doing bearings, uh, license plates, registration, all that jazz goes away. Just drive it up. So let me show you guys how I kind of like strap it down. This is a huge advantage. This is why I bought this because I wanted all my sleds and stuff in the back of my truck and the snow dog right on the tailgate, basically. it on there and I take a grill cover. Snow Dog also makes a cover, a grill cover. Um, that's the dimensions of your Snow Dog and you plop it over there and you strap it down and you're at, that's, that's it basically. 
And this is just to keep the road salt and snow and stuff off of it. And I like to throw some straps up, up and over it that attach to the, uh, where you attach a trailer to the trailer chains to. Help stabilize it. So that's it for number three. And just do the reverse to take it off. Basically drop the tailgate, take the cover off, take the straps off, wheel it down and uh, start it up and then just go. I mean, that is probably, it's in the top three reasons because having that in a small truck, otherwise I have that full size truck and a bunch of other stuff and keep stuff with the tailgate. That is the best way to do it. So on to number four. Uh, number four is some states don't require it to be registered because you don't actually ride on it. So the state of Vermont doesn't require you to, ride, to register it. State of New Hampshire does. Uh, it's $130 as a snowmobile. I have heard people registering them as an ATV, but you can't use the snowmobile trails. So between $50 and $130, it's the same as a snowmobile. That ice is super loud. Um, and you don't need some special license or anything like that to drive it unless you're uh, like basically underage. Number five is you can use this in the winter and the summer. So ATVs you can use in the winter and the summer, but then ATVs you get to put chains on or skis on or stud the track or get tracks for it. Snowmobiles, you cannot use them during the summer. That's just what it is. So one of the main advantages of this compared to a snowmobile is one, it's air cooled. And yes, they do make air-cooled snowmobiles but this has a normal Briggs and Stratton motor in it this is basically the lawnmower motor or a uh, snowblower motor in there that you can tune any way you'd like and they're super easy to work on but it has bogey wheels so I've rocked this in my backyard on grass and dirt and I you can put a sled behind it if you want to or I've actually taken like a little ATV trailer and hitched it to the back and rocked it so this thing goes like 20 miles an hour. It's governed basically at that speed, which is plenty fast. Uh, and that's like the only disadvantage of this is 20. You can go like 110 with a snowmobile, but you're not gonna be towing a sled at 110. It'd be kind of sketchy. So I can get a full 12 months out of this. I don't rock it during the summer that much because there's not a lot of ATV trails around me and I'd have to register it as an ATV. So there's a little, little difference there in the state of New Hampshire, but I know people that use these for hunting, they tow out their deers with it, they try their deer stand stuff in it with it. Um, you can use it all year round. So that $3,000 is split over 12 months. That's fantastic. Instead of an $8,000 snowmobile that you can only use for like state of New Hampshire, trails opened up like the first or second week in January, and then they're gone in like a couple months. So that's, you know, huge advantage right there. Number six is one that's super, super easy to work on. There is no engine control unit. There's no um, crazy stuff that has to come from Japan or anything like that. All of this stuff is made. Some of it's metric. I'll give, I'll give them that. That's kind of a pain in the butt. But all of this stuff, Briggs and Stratton is made right here in the United States as far as I know. All of this stuff is tubular frame. The bogey wheels you can buy easy. Sprockets and chains are really easy. The track is super easy. It really doesn't have any custom parts. And I've worked on all of this with just a Craftsman tool set. So it's super easy to work on. You don't need to go plug it into a, a, a Articat downloading ECU program reader basically to go have it fixed or it's throwing some sort of emission code because there is no emissions on this. It has a normal exhaust, it takes normal gas. I put premium gas in it just because it runs a little bit better. Um, but it's super easy to work on, super easy to store as well. And that leads us to number seven, which is it's super easy to store. So when I'm not using this in the summertime, that's it. I fold the handle up, I drive it in, well, drive it in the garage, put it on a pallet, and I jack it off the tracks basically so the springs don't have to work all summer long. And that's it. I've seen people actually put these in the back of their hatchback car, which I might do just for part of this video, but probably not. Um, but it fits right in the in the a small part of your part of your garage, or it takes one little tarp to cover it, and that is it. So the compact storage is great. It takes up just a little part of my garage instead of a snowmobile, which is you know they're super long with the track and the skis and all that jazz, and then they're really hard to move around. I could spin this by myself just by yanking on the on the handlebars. So there are my seven reasons why I chose the snow dog over a snowmobile or an ATV. And I had an ATV before, I actually still have one. And I have a snow, had a snowmobile and this is just 
just one way cooler. It's like my mini little tank. Um, but that's seven reasons why I chose that. And if you guys have any questions, please reach out to me and let me know. I've had this for, this will be my second season on the ice with it. Um, I do want to upgrade to the bigger horsepower because my overnight trips, tow, I tow a lot of weight. I tow a lot of stuff out in the ice. So uh, let me know if you guys have any questions and uh, thanks for watching.